present. Howdy, y'all. I got you in my pocket. And this way you can see what I see. And hopefully, I'm going to walk down the road here a little bit. Because <laughs> there's some wild stuff out here that is real pretty. And, well, some of it's real pretty. And some of it's actually uh, real good for other things. Uh, first off, well, th this is real good for butterflies. Uh, this here is a common milkweed plant. See if I can get some, get it to milk some. Uh, yeah, that's a common milkweed plant. So, uh, out here, a little bit, you see the yellow and black flowers. Um, I call them black-eyed Susans. I'm not exactly sure what they are. Um, next to that, uh, we got the orange flowers. Those orange flowers are uh, commonly known around here as butterfly weed. Next to that was a wild carrot. That's that what white thing. But uh, the thing I wanted to get on film for you is down here. Um, this is a, not that far of a walk from the house, but these are the wild elderberries. This little stand here has been slowly getting bigger every couple of years and been leaving it alone and hope, hoping for it to get massive and as you can see all those flowers it, if if it fruits out like it should it should be a nice patch of elderberries uh, if you look, uh, little bugs on it, those are lightning bugs. They like to flower, but this patch is probably about 15, 20 feet around. So, you know, it's, it's pretty nice. We'll cross over the, to the other side of the road here, because there's some pretty little things out here too it's the wild roses I think they're pretty I know they smell pretty and I know you can't smell them but I like them and I'm glad to see that they're coming back pretty nice you know so many people in so many places do the most despicable thing I can think of and they mow and poison areas alongside the road like this. This is actually a, a beautiful spot to definitely not poison. For one thing, uh, small game birds such as uh, quail live in the places like this and the quail populations have been going down for years upon years due to loss of habitat one of the things we can do is give them their habitat back and it'd be great um, this plant here has probably been cut down three or four times uh, is a wild persimmon You know, that's another thing that a lot of, there ain't a lot of anymore is persimmons and sassafras because they grow in these areas alongside the road because they like sun, they like disturbed soil, so, you know, this is a good place for them to grow, but idiots cut them down, burn them, uh, poison them with herbicides and 
generally just kill them. And they don't realize that's part of the reason the critters are getting into their gardens. Because you're taking all the critters' food. That's a pretty tree up there. Looks like it's uh, covered mainly in... Uh, uh, well, from here it looks like poison ivy and grapevines. It's pretty though. You know, dead trees, especially if they're not going to fall over and hit something, best left to just be a dead tree. They support all sorts of animals even as a dead tree, you know. Just leave them. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, oh, here, here's a nice vine. Um, oftentimes it's called a, a passion flower if you find it in seed catalogs. Um, but uh, a more common name for it is a maypop, and it actually produces fruit that's edible. You know, it's amazing what you can find right alongside the road if you pay attention and people ain't poisoning it. Like right there, there's your grapevine. Now it's a pretty young grapevine so it probably ain't going to produce grapes. But it just goes to show that if you look around in nature, nature's going to take good care of you. That's all there is to it. Nature is going to love on you, and all you got to do is love on it and pretty much leave it the hell alone. You know, let it do what it's going to do. Oh, I got a sneaky hen. I don't know if you can see her or not. She's out of the pen. She's, she's one of my two jumpers that jumps the fence. You know, I got a three foot tall fence around their pen, but shoot, they still jump it. Oh, here's a closer look at one of those yellow flowers. <laughs> Go through the Buckeyes. See, there, there she is. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but we got thunder going on in the background. Because thunderstorms are rolling through, but I don't think we're going to get wet. It's more of a heat, heat lightning and heat thunder. But look at this. Ain't these things gorgeous? I mean, mm, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful berries. Gotta love me some raspberries. Again, this is a small patch. I think there was like five vines that came in the order. And I planted them and they're slowly multiplying. This is the second or third year they've been out. Let's see, I planted them out here in oh, spring of 2016. So it's their second year. Out there, the, the silver dollar plants. They're a pretty plant. I like the purple flowers. Thing about the silver dollars is it, it's a biennial, which means it takes two years to produce its seed pods. You know, the first year it just grows and um, has leaves. It's the, not until the second year that it puts on its silver dollars. And the inside has silver dollars. What some people do with these things is they pick the whole stem uh, after it started to die and dry out. They just go ahead and get the whole stem um, carefully rub all the um, 
seed pods open while they're still on the stem and then they spray them with uh, hairspray they use them for decorations and whatnot because well they are a shiny pretty thing okay it's hot it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit 32 degrees Celsius for the friends who around the world who watch Celsius so I think I'm gonna go in and try to cool off an air conditioner I'll talk at y'all later